Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. This session, as you can tell by this fancy slide that I made, is called Financial Management Keys to Unlock Your Business Potential. I even had a guy go and find me that cool little padlock and he made it all fuzzy looking and cool, so I'm very pleased with it. This is a session that is a little bit of a snapshot from the Pocket MBA. Raise your hand if you haven't heard about the Pocket MBA program that Harry has out there. All right, not many hands. You need to look it up. It's an awesome program. It's a series that goes for 12 weeks at a time, I believe. We got a couple people who've joined up for it. And it's just to get some good business knowledge to help you run your business. So I'm real pleased with this presentation. It's gonna be a little bit of just kind of a snapshot of what you'd get in one of the courses in the Pocket MBA. All right, a little bit about myself. My name is Josh Peterson. I've been consulting in this industry as a management consultant for about 10 years. I love this industry. I like you guys too, not much, but I do like you guys a little bit. Mostly because you guys are such gluttons for punishment. This is the worst business to run in the world. Low margins, low barriers to entry. Anybody who decides to be an IT consultant can start tomorrow. But somehow you guys have made it far enough along that you can be sitting in this room today. So I'm impressed with that. It's a hard business. And with the changes, very impressed. So I've been at it for about 10 years. Used to work with a company called Taylor Business Group. It's a great management consulting firm. I started a company called MSP Score, and what we do is we do management consulting, but we also focus on something called Net Promoter Score, finding out what your clients really think about you. So we do a survey of your clients to find out how they would refer you to their friends and colleagues. So I like the service, it's doing very well, but my core business is in what we describe down here, providing training for your businesses on these topics. Accounting, service delivery, sales, sales management. Had somebody come in today say that they hired their first salesperson after how many years in business? 12, 12 years, first salesperson. Let me take an informal poll. Raise your hand if you have a salesperson. Raise your hand if you have two salespeople. Three. Great. I'm glad to see that. That's what we need more of. That's what really makes these businesses go, is getting that external sales force going out there for you. All right, so that's enough about me. Let's jump in. Now, I'm pretty opinionated on stuff, and you can tell me I'm full of whatever you want to tell me I'm full of. That's okay. We can argue. We can debate. I like getting your opinions, but I'm going to start with mine, and we'll see where we go from there. All right, I'm going to go through eight key metrics of your business. Okay, and I've broken them down into service, sales, and admin. And we're going to just work our way through each one of them. Hopefully you'll have some questions. If you don't, that's fine too. The first one is service department gross profitability. I need that to be at 55%. Please raise your hand if you are currently measuring this metric. That is not enough hands. What are you doing if you're not measuring your service department's gross profitability? Tell me that you know what your service salary expense is relative to your service revenue. Raise your hand if you know that number. Again, guys, not enough hands. These are basic. If you're running your business without those two numbers right there, you're running blind. The good news is that once you pay attention to it, you can control it. So you've got a great opportunity in your hands. Okay. One third of service revenue is the maximum that we're going to pay to our engineers for salary and bonuses. And please tell me you have a bonus program in place for your engineers. Raise your hand if you do have a bonus program. Somebody tell me what their bonus program is based off of. That's way too vague. Tell me exactly what they need to perform at to get a bonus. Um, their reaction time to the tickets, their uh, proactive performance for uh, working on customer networks, and not having any type of uh, complaints or anything. No complaints, response time, and what was the other one? Uh, proactive service. And being proactive. All right. We're going to come back to that a little bit. Tell me if you guys have a dispatcher. Do you have a service dispatcher? All right. 
we need to talk about service dispatchers at some point because all of those things you mentioned are crucially important, but I don't want those anywhere near the engineer's hands, okay? I want a dispatcher directing the activities of those guys. Tell me another way that you're bonusing service techs. Yes, sir. Yeah. Everyone knows exactly what red light, green light means, right? I don't either. What does it mean? What makes it red? What makes it green? Give me one. Cool. I like it. Somebody give me one more. I'm looking for one. I can't believe I haven't heard it. I don't really care about it, but I'm surprised we haven't heard it yet. Who said it? Nice. What's the benchmark for you guys? One fifteen? One one five? One five zero. There's hundred and sixty work hours in a month and you get hundred and fifty? Yeah. And you're getting one fifty. One fifty on that they get and Okay, so you measure it twice a year and then we pay on it. Excellent. Service utilization, billable utilization, billable hours. Yes, sir. Every month we get our keyboard tax bonus, they have to close one hundred and sixty tickets and record one hundred and sixty hours of productive time. What does productive mean? Billable? Um, it doesn't all have to be billable. Okay. We're, we're, we're flat rate. Oh, okay. So not everything that they're doing is directly billable. Right. There's knock work, there's ticket work. So but put they, against an agreement. But they have to show that they're productive 160 hours out of the month, and they have to close at least 160 hours, and they get a $200 bonus every month that they do it. Beautiful. Give me yours, man. We have a two-tiered SLA system. We have not the two-tiered two SLA system. Holy not crap. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to us. We have an SLA that we freak out, and everybody gets beat up if they yeah. meet. And then we have an SLA that if we meet that, then we start bonusing people. I love it. What's the biggest bonus a guy can get? Biggest bonus? Yeah. Uh, 5000 Damn, that's a lot of money. What are you giving your guys for those billable utilizations? You can't hear anything up here. He's talking about a, an SLA system that motivates the guys to respond in an appropriate amount of time, and the biggest amount that a guy can get is about five grand. All right. Five to ten percent of the salary. Okay, beautiful. All right, beautiful. Okay, we had a few people raise their hand that they had a bonus system. We had very few people raise their hand that they're measuring service department gross profitability. We had very few people raise their hand that they're tracking their service salary expenses towards service revenue. Okay, you just heard randomly five, six people talk about a bonus program that they have. If you're not doing those three things, be like the five people who are doing it and do it Monday, please, I beg you. If you're not, you're screwing up and you're being a lazy owner. I still like you, but you're lazy, okay? This is on your P&L, it's there, pay attention to it. To not do so is irresponsible, okay? What is service revenue? Recurring revenue, hardware as a service revenue, billable time revenue, project revenue. The thing that it is not is product rail, revenue, product sales. Okay, we're gonna break that out separately. Some of the, yes sir? Are you saying this is just a baseline or are you saying it shouldn't exceed this too? I want the 55% service department gross profitability to be the minimum, okay? Minimum gross profit on that department is 55%. The maximum of your service salaries to service revenue is 33%, yes sir? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the unloaded cost in there, okay? But you can do it both ways. Once you really start ramping up, if you want to hold yourself to a little higher metric, go ahead and put that in there. The other question you're going to think about later is, oh man, I got a service manager and a dispatcher. Do those go in there as well? Yeah. All right, hold yourself to a high standard. Once you really start clicking with this, you're going to want to account for all your service costs in there. All right, and here's a couple of the other costs. 
Don't put your whole PSA tool against the service department, okay? Raise your hand if you're using Autotask. Raise your hand if you're using ConnectWise. TigerPaw. All right, good. So don't put your whole PSA tool in there. Put a third of it. Put a third towards your sales department, a third towards your admin, and a third towards your service department, okay? Okay, that's key number eight. Service department gross profitability. Let's go to the next one. Agreement gross profitability. Do we have any representatives from Autotask in this room right now? Raise your hand if you're an Autotask user again, please. Your first call Monday, and this is where I cuss, and I'm gonna to try to keep my blood pressure under control here. Your first call Monday is to Autotask and say, please, Show me how to get the agreement gross profitability report out of your software. Please show me. Don't tell me I can do it. Don't tell me how to do it. Show me, okay? Because Autotask is being very irresponsible with their software by not having that ready for you to click so you can know your agreement gross profitability, okay? Raise your hand if you know your managed services agreement gross profitability number. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Somebody give me another number. Yes, sir. 57. I love it. Somebody else. 68. I love it. Yes, sir. Warren, how are you? 65. I love this. These are great numbers. Now, the only people who raise their hand are the people that are killing it. Somebody raise their hand that tells me they know their number and they're not killing it. Come on. Somebody knows it. No one's going to cop to it. Because I know that that's not the reality for every one of you. Okay, the first thing you need to do is get the number, then we can improve the number. Okay? But when I look in your books, it ain't no 55 and 60. It's 40, it's 30, and more often than not, it's, I don't know. Okay? Demand that your PSA provides this report for you and that it is accurate. If you're a ConnectWise user, demand that it's accurate. Okay, oftentimes it is not. There are some tricks to making it work. My very best service managers, my Ronnies, my Brian's of the world, these guys live and die by that report. Raise your hand if you have never done this calculation. Don't be afraid. Okay, I swear to God you just paid for your cost of admission for being here if you will do this report. Okay, I don't want to be ambiguous about it. Your PSAs owe you this, demand it, but it's not an excuse if you can't get it from them. You need to make the spreadsheet. Now you need to figure it out. How much revenue do I have? What's the cost of my labor that I put into that agreement plus my licensing cost and divide that by my agreement revenue? Do this at least once a month and if you wanna be hardcore, do it weekly. How much time are we putting into these agreements? What's my budget? If I've got a $1,000 agreement, I have $400 that I can put towards that agreement. If I've got a 50 bucks worth of licenses, I've got $350 I can put towards that agreement. If my loaded rate for an engineer is $35 an hour, I've got 10 hours, that's it. But I bet if we go and look, we're gonna see that we're putting 12 hours, 15 hours consistently. Yes, sir? I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, what should I be doing with uh, miscellaneous time that I kept spending against that account? A 10 minute phone call, 15 minute phone call. Typically they say, hey, it takes more time to record it. That's bullshit. Okay. Absolute bullshit. Don't even buy that from them. Excuse me for cussing. I'm going to cuss and I apologize. If you want me to pay you a dollar every time I cuss, that's fine. I don't care. But that's <laughs> bullshit, okay? His question was. What do I do with those miscellaneous time incidents that I spend on those agreements? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. My tech says it takes more time to enter the time than the actual time I did working. Thank you. Carl Palachuk says fire him. Okay. We got, it's, you're, they're absolutely right. It does take time. But the reality is we got to know how much time we're putting into them. I know you do, you know, but you're fighting the, you might be fighting the right battle and we can, we can talk a little more about how to get a culture of enter your time, okay? But I don't want to, I could talk all day about that. Very best service managers live and die by this report. They look at it weekly. Okay, I've got one company in New York City that looks at it every single day. 
and they marry it up with this very killer thing called effective hourly rate. Somebody raise your hand and tell me, give me an example, one sentence, two sentences max of what effective hourly rate is. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Why does it matter? All right, I heard a groan. Why does it matter? If I tell you that I will paint your fence for $10 and it takes me one hour to do it, how much am I making per hour? If it takes me a half hour, how much am I making? Okay? You need to know that for your agreement so you can know how much extra work you can be doing if you can do it quicker or more efficiently. Okay? Then we get into a deep conversation about opportunity cost. If I can do the same work in half the time, that means I can do twice the amount of work in a day, which means more billable opportunity. There's three ways, there's more than three ways. Here's the three ways that I would recommend you to do it, but you can slice this thing any way you want. Total service revenue divided by total service payroll hours. Effective hourly rate on total hours compensated. When I gather up all my service revenue and divide by all the hours that I pay, what does it come up to? Ladies and gentlemen, it better be greater than your rack rate, the rate that you will tell somebody how much it costs to fix something per hour, whether it's $125 or $150 an hour. You need to be damn close to that. If you want to be a little scared, you can do it this way. Total service revenue divided by total billable hours. That's the I'm scared of the real number effective hourly rate. Okay? Do them both ways and see where you're going. Yes, sir. Exactly. Okay? That's why it's the I'm scared version. Okay? But we'll let you start with that if it makes you feel any better. Okay? I need these numbers to be coming in right around your rack rate or greater. This number is the most important right here. Total recurring revenue divided by total service hours against the agreement. Agreement effective hourly rate. Raise your hand if you've ever done that number. That is a shame. That is a shame. I could rant on about Enable, Kaseya, all the rest of those bullshitters, okay? You have been sold a bill of goods on this managed services myth. I love recurring revenue, I love managed services. Don't try to twist my words, I love every bit of it. Okay, but you have been not been taught the right things about it. If no one, when they sold you that beautiful RMM tool, taught you about effective hourly rate on agreements, they did a disservice to you because the same people that taught you about it are also the same people that wanted to sell you $25,000 in licenses, okay? Oh, and we got a training academy too. We're gonna to show you how to do all this stuff. Well, they didn't show you this, did they? Okay, do this number please and email me and tell me what it is. Yes? One of the issues we're having or I think we're having is that it's too high. What's too high? Our effective rate. Oh my God, what a it's great problem to have. Right, yeah. If you actually seen where people are too high and they're not delivering good numbers. That's a great point. That's a really great point. When we look at effective hourly rate and compare it to our agreement gross profitability, there's a very fine line balance of are we ignoring our clients, not putting enough hours in, and getting really high effective hourly rates. Does everyone understand that? My effective hourly rate is going to be really high if I never do anything for my client. Okay, so we got to walk the balance. And frankly, I'm not going to do a commercial, but that's where MSP score comes in with the net promoter score. If your net promoter score is high and your clients are happy and they will refer you, then you're doing something right. But we need to have a balance, and I've got a little triangle of how to balance out all of these things to make sure that you're giving good service. Okay? Effective hourly rate. I need it to be double. Double your rack rate. If you're $150 an hour, I need it to be 300. Okay? Now that's a tough balance with getting the right agreement gross profitability. The only way you're going to get high agreement gross profitability and a high effective hourly rate on agreements is by pricing aggressively and automating. We have in our presence today Mr. Carl Palachuk, who is the master of this. 
He knows how to build an agreement. He knows how to price it, and he knows how to service it. Okay? If we ran his numbers, we would see great AGP and great effective hourly rate. Okay, what other kind of crap do I put up here? You're selling your agreements too low. You're not putting enough time into your agreements. Uh, you're putting too much time into your agreements. You're not remediating problems before turning the client up. Okay, this is the number one killer. Raise your hand if you believe the following statement is true. The first three months of an agreement or a managed service contract aren't profitable. Please raise your hand if you believe it's true. Oh man, you guys are scared. You believe it's true. All right. I want those things to be profitable from day one. Okay? They have to be. That's the only way we keep a good client relationship is if we set the expectation that before you can come on my program, I need to remediate the issues. Don't chase that crappy little $900 contract just so you can start billing $900 a month and then start dumping and burying time into it and being confused why when you came back Monday morning, you looked at your AGP and it's 20%. Remediate the problems before you start, and you're going to have great numbers here. Okay? I want you to be a managed service provider. I want you to have recurring revenue. I want you to enjoy all the benefits of having $100,000 a month in recurring revenue. But I want you to do it smartly. Okay? This is how to do it smartly. Know these numbers inside and out. Challenge yourself to look at them at least monthly, <laughs> weekly, if you can find the time, and if your PSA will play nicely. What questions do you have so far? Anybody? All right. We're going to get off of service and we're going to get on to sales and we're going to only spend a minute on sales. Raise your hand again if you have salespeople. All right. Tell me about this dime on a dollar. I didn't make that up. All right. That's been around forever. It just works really well in our industry as well. 10% of company revenue goes towards your sales budget. Somebody tell me what they're spending on their sales budget. If you raise your hand, you better know the answer. Raise your hand again if you have salespeople. What's your budget for sales folks? No problem. Sir? Huh, eight? All right. Give me another one. Who, who else raised your hand? Raise your hand if you have salespeople. Matt Mackowitz. 20%. Sir? 10? Yes, sir? Against gross profit, that's interesting. I wonder what it, would be, what it would be against revenue. We'd have to do some math. Okay. Yes, sir. I just have a question. I've heard this metric to be 20 if you're in growth mode. Is that Sure, absolutely. Yeah, ab I'll tell you what. Here's the fact, all right? I don't give a shit about my numbers. I got no ego tied up in my numbers. My numbers are my numbers. That's all they are. As long as you know your numbers and you have a target for your numbers, they can be whatever they are. I promise you that's cool. But most times, people have no idea what number they should be shooting for. So growth mode, I don't mind it. My net profit, I don't care if I'm losing money, if I'm reinvesting right back in my company. So 20%, if you've got a plan, you're on point. I have a question about the 10 or 20%. Uh, you utilize your sales marketing efforts. Is that payable for sales people as well as marketing materials, outbound calling, whatever? You bet. He's asking, is that 10% for payroll, for marketing material, marketing efforts, outbound calling? Absolutely. That's everything all in one. How I prefer that you guys do this, this is my preference, you do it however you want to do it, but my preference is that you spend at about two-thirds of it on sales salaries, compensation, bonuses, commissions, and a third of it on marketing. Now, I don't care, again, if you have a plan and you want to tell me that you're going to do it all towards marketing, that's awesome, but show me that you have a plan. Please tell me you're doing more than sending out some cheesy postcards every six weeks. Please tell me that you're getting some dollars from your vendors. Please tell me that you're putting on events that people actually attend. But don't tell me that you spend $1,000 a month on some crappy postcards that no one's ever going to read and then one person called one time and now you think it's a success. Please don't tell me that. Okay. Who's doing some interesting marketing? Somebody give us a marketing idea that we can all go home with? Yes, sir? Beautiful. I'll, I'll repeat it for sure. What our man is doing is he's going to his radio station saying, I'm going to trade services for airtime. 
If you're gonna do the radio, you gotta get a great deal because you gotta pollute the airwaves, like you said, with it. They gotta be hearing your name a lot. But if you can trade services and do that, I love it. it doesn't cost you much, the cost of labor. Yes, sir. 